we're going to make this morning it is a double walled twill weave Christmas tree collar see that it has the stained base that's about a three and a half inch wide hole and then the base is slotted so uh, for artificial trees this works awesome and um, if you're in a buffalo plaid I love buffalo plaid I have it all over my house um, this is just one more buffalo plaid thing that you probably need to have so this is double walled see the insides is uh, natural and then the twill is actually done on the outside so I don't have the lashing done but I want to show you what the finished product looked like before we started this morning let's get going so uh, we are going to start with our base it is a slotted base and it also has a circle in the center and that's for your tree to go through once we've got this finished so you notice it has a red stain on it and then on top of that I put kind of an antique of an oak that's rubbed in there to give a little more rustic look so we're going to put 36 of these guys in here there's a right side and a wrong side to read the rough side is what in this case we want to go down and um, usually you would put it up and do your weave but this is going to be we're kind of doing this in reverse so this is going to be the top of our basket so we want the rough side down the easiest way to do this because we have 36 of them is to find the four corners here we have 36 which means what we got eight in each section I think so and you could measure these if you wanted I tend to eyeball so and I do want these when I put them in coming up like this and I'll take because what will happen when we flip this over is and we're working on it they'll flare out if you've got them going the opposite way then the, the basket tends to go in and then like I say this is kind of reverse on a basket so it's okay that they're flipping up at this point these guys are pretty close The first thing we want to do before we start weaving is a spray bottle. Remember I said you don't get them wet before you start the weaving process. But once you get them inserted, go ahead and spray them using some warm water. What that does is it gets that rattan reed soaked up and it makes it expand a little bit and it holds it in there while you're weaving it. it makes it just a little bit easier so I have some twining material that I have in my water getting wet and we're going to twine these for about two rows so there's one or two ways you can do this I have some short guys so I'm just going to start behind two but if you had a long piece and this was together, you could actually go like this and loop it. So I can loop it right there. Okay. Um, but I have two short pieces, so I am going to go behind two and do this. Either way is fine behind one stake behind another stake and then I'm going to twine when you twine it looks like in front of one behind one 
and out to the front. Your two weavers are always coming out at you. You're always making the stroke. I'm right-handed, so I weave clockwise. You're always coming out at you. You're always taking the guy, that's the weaver, that is furthest away from the direction you're going. So that would be this one. And I go in front of one, behind one, uh, twine. Once again, they're both always coming out at you. In front of one, behind. In front of one, behind. And then I'll move that over. In front of one, and behind. In front of one. It's hard to see all these guys are flipping up here. And behind. And when you look at these guys in between, there should be like little X's or little figure eights. If you're not getting a figure eight, and you're doing a different type of weave, and we won't talk about that now. Do these tend to twirl up some? Yes, they do. All right, so we're going to do this for about two rows. I'm going to show you how I continue them. So right now we're twining. Yeah, that one just busted. Good time to show you. Okay, so here's my new weaver. I'm going to make the stroke with this guy. That's definitely too short, right? So, I'm going to take my new weaver, and I'm going to pick up the dog tail and stick in the thermometer. You'll never forget it. There you go. So, and then we just continue. Weave means make sure that each stake has the same amount of twining on them, okay? So if, if you look at this, I've got two here. That means that row's finished. If I twine one more row, then I'd have three on here. That's not what I want, okay? I don't want to do three. I just want to do two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock these in. So I'm going to open that up just a little bit instead of making the stroke. And I'm going to feed it through that last row and pull it tight. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this other little tail. Open that up a little bit. Feed it through. And then your base is locked in. So when you're looking on a pattern that says lock it in, that's what they mean. Okay. And then I'm just going to trim those up. Will I trim all those little hairies up? You betcha. But not right now. Okay. So we're going to start weaving the base. This is extended out to about 14 inches in diameter. So uh, we're going to do that by, we have an even amount of stakes, 36, which means that would be start and stop weaving. And for the top of this, we really want to do uh, continuous weave. So what I'm going to do is choose one of these stakes and cut it down the middle. Doesn't matter which one. We'll use this one. That looks good. So now I've just created from 36, 37 stakes. Okay. And you want to cut that as even as you can. There you go. So now I've got 37 stakes. So I'm going to get my weaving material and I'm going to taper it for about eh, 12 inches. And then I'm going to start weaving 
around flat still because all I'm doing at this point is I am making the base larger to about 14 inches in diameter from 10. So I'm going to do about four inches of weaving on the sides here. Okay, so what I've done is I've tapered this for about eh, six inches. And I'm going to spin this around and I'm going to start it where I split that stake. Now remember, this is going to be the right side. So the rough side you want down on this. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of go back four. Okay, so I got that little piece, little piece right there. You see it? Okay. So it's just a continuous over and under weave until I get about four more inches on this for a total of 14. And I'll show you how that cutting that stake so that it's an odd number of stakes it makes this a continuous weave here in just a second. You're still being flat, but you do, so you can like hold your stakes down with your hand and pull a little bit if you don't feel like that's tight enough. Okay, so remember, we split that stake, right? So when I'm coming around to the weave, because it's odd, my weave is on, see? If it wasn't, it was an even amount, I would have to do start and stop, and we'll get there. Okay. So I'm going to spread these out just a little bit so I got a little bit more room on that um, stake. And this will continue to fan out and the stakes will get farther apart from each other. So I'm going to do this, for, I think it's about seven rows, but don't quote me. Check the pattern. The other thing you to do or to consider when you're doing this is to check the, the um, Facing between your stakes. <clears throat> Sometimes they'll shift around a little bit and you want them centered. The reason you want them centered is because when you're weaving, if they get too close to one another, you can't weave. Now, and that won't be so much in this one because these are flaring out and you've got more space here than you do down here. But in other baskets that are more straight up and down and have less flare, you really got to be conscious of that. So I'm always looking at making sure that my stakes are where they're supposed to be. Because like I should say, they do shift. The weavers are always wet. And on my third row. And because I'm limited in space here, I'm really going to pull these guys out. I'll push this one over a little bit. Even though you think, well, that's not much. In the grand scheme of basket making, it is. Okay, so I'm going to run out of this. So this is plated weaving, or just over and under. And the way that we add this is a little bit different. You don't want it to show, so you make sure that it's not um, past the stake. Okay? So I get grab my other piece that's been sitting in the water. Remember, I want my smooth side up on this. So, and then I'm going to count back four. One, two, three, four. Four stakes. And then I'm going to layer that right on top of it so you don't see the start. And you don't see the end. How cool is that? Okay. Good baskets. So you don't see the starts or ends. Okay, so I'm going to keep going around here for about seven rows, and then you're going to twine it. Okay, 
this point we want to taper these back because this is where we started. So we're going to taper these over so that it's uh, completely round with the stagger in. So I'm going to trim that back for about six, seven inches, maybe eight. I'm going to just leave it in. Call that good. Okay. So then we're going to do some triple twine. Got this about, actually this ended up being like how many inches? No, we're in on 14. So it was nine rows for me to get 14 inches. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to spray these a little bit. I'm going to change back to twining again. But first, I want to get these wet because I am going to uh, upset them. I need to have them wet before I upset them. And these guys are going to go down. So when you upset it, uh, you call it names. I think it's upset. No. We're bending it. We're going to do that triple twine on top of this because I want that to be inside and then we'll flip it. All right. So one, two, three behind stake number one, stake number two, and stake number three. Now, if this is difficult for you and these keep coming out, one of the things that you can do is take a clip and hold them in place. Until you come around to it again. I think I can put that there. I might be able to put it here. The next row will hold it. Okay. These are really long weavers. So I'm going to go. I'm going to bring one over here just so you can see it better. So I've got three weavers coming out of three holes or three stakes one behind that one two and three i'm still going i'm right-handed so i'm weaving clockwise and i go in front of two behind one in front of two behind one i'm always taking the weaver that's furthest away from the direction that i'm weaving i'm weaving clockwise Means I take one all the way to the left. That's my weaver. These two guys are just hanging in here looking at me. Okay. So. In front of two. Behind one. Now. I was taught this. By Joe Hogan. Of County Galway, Ireland. And he taught it. In the gap. The last one came out. Which would be that one. And out the next gap. In the gap that the last one came out and out the next gap that worked for me when I was first learning it so whichever way your brain can take the information it's either in front of two one two behind one in front of two one two behind one or in the gap that the last one came out and out the next gap in the gap that the last one came out and out the next gap. Whichever. That worked for me when I was learning it. So I'm going to go around one time. And then I am going to flip this over. Okay, so one thing I want to show you, this is called stepping up. I don't usually do this, but on this one, it's probably a good idea. So you remember, we're still doing in front of two behind one. You got three here. This is the last one. So on your last three strokes, and I always have to look at this to make sure I'm right. You want to do this opposite of what you normally do by starting here. 
you're going to start on one all the way to the right and go in front of two behind one in front of two behind one in front of two behind one now you still got a one two three but what that does is it makes it even so that it's not bulked up and on this particular one it's probably a good idea if you don't want to step up don't do it it's just a mask okay but that's how you step up in case you want to i'm going to cut these off will i trim them later yes i will All right, now we're going to flip it. Okay, so I'm going to use the clip again just to hold this in place. I'm going to start this around. And because I don't want everything started at the same place, I'm going to come over here. So we are going to use um, some different reed to do the inside of this. And basically all we're doing is we're making a form so that we can put all our cool embellishment and our double wall on the outside. 